Hello there folks, welcome to Shots by the Airsoft and today we've got a long rifle on the channel but this is not a sniper rifle, it is a DMR. Now first of all, I'd like to say sorry about the slight break in videos, been very busy recently, all sorts of stuff going on and it's been quite frustrating getting anything in for the channel. Uh, ordered parts for the TM Mark 23, they took two weeks to get here, um, which kind of balls me up, I was expecting to come in a few days. I say the VMP1 looks like it's still going to be out towards the end of June. Uh, however, that is still coming for the channel. So I thought I'd better act pretty quick and get something that I can actually do a review on. And I thought, what haven't we had on the channel before? And that would be a DMR type rifle. DMR being a designated marksman's rifle. And uh, that's a quite a powerful AEG, which is limited to semi-auto out of the box. Uh, this is an unboxing. This is exactly how it comes. However, you can see there is quite a dent in the box and there's also a few puncture marks. I did open this up. And whilst I was in there, I snipped the zip ties just to make this easier to get out. So I have seen it, but I haven't actually brought it really out of the box and had a proper look. I just checked it over for damage and then put it straight back in. Uh, so I know it's long, but that's about it. So let's get in there and have a look at what we've got. Uh, very simple box. It's got a carrier handle though. Uh, it seems to have done a good job of protecting the uh, gun inside. And then, wow. Uh, <laughs> I have forgotten how big this was. So you can see, uh, was zip tied in. Uh, first one, we're going to look at the mag. Uh, this has not been opened yet. Ah, pop it out. This is a little 150 round high cap magazine, and uh, it is a winder. So yeah, it is a high cap. Load it in the top, and then uh, obviously feeds up through the uh, standard sort of feed lips. This is a standard M4 type magazine, so you can put a standard M4 type mags in that. It's just a short DMR style sort of stubby mag. Now, like I say, it, at 150 rounds, if you're firing, you know, one per kill, this is a DMR after all, that'll probably keep you going for a little while. And like I say, if you do want a bit more capacity, you can stick like a 200 round mid cap in it or something like that. Um, obviously this is gonna rattle when you move, which is a bit annoying, but um, yeah, it's a nice little mag. I believe it is metal with sort of polymer end caps, which is nice. Uh, the gun itself, oh, she's a big girl. It is very heavy. Let's just get this box out of the way. So to give it its full name, this is a Double Bell M16 SPR Mod 2 DMR. That's what it was actually brought under the title of. Now an SPR is a special uh, purpose rifle, which means that um, it has a very specific purpose. It is pretty much what it says on the tin. Um, an SPR and a DMR technically aren't the same thing. Um, although you could say that a designated marksman's, marksman's rifle is a special purpose rifle. The purpose is for a marksman and long distance shooting. Um, however, a special purpose rifle is usually sort of like intermediate ammo, um, medium range, whereas this is very much a long distance rifle. The intent is a long distance rifle. Uh, we've got a mil-spec AR-15 receiver, um, a nice sort of ergonomic shooter's grip, um, which is very nice indeed. However, uh, it goes without saying, this kind of makes it a, a right-hand only weapon, so you would have to change your grip if you wanted to use this left-handed, uh, which is kind of less than, um, less than ideal. We have a massive um, solid stock, and in there we have an enormous battery cavity that you can get all sorts of packs in. So there's enough room in there to essentially go the whole day at your uh, airsoft field of choice without any recharging. We have a nice set of metal flip up sights up here, which are actually retained by a little clip. And pop that out and they pop up. Now you have a choice of uh, sight rings. So you've got a sort of narrow long distance sight and then you've got a sort of more like a combat sight which is a wider ring and that goes with a flip up front sight all the way down here uh, to give you an opposing sight to work with. Uh, coming back to this side of the gun we have our very simple fire controls who are safe and semi. Uh, it will go around to auto, but I do not believe it actually uh, works in, in fully automatic. So we've got a safe and a semi. And we've got a bolt release, which I do believe... Uh, 
actually functions. So there you can see our rotary hops exposed. And if I use the bolt release on the opposite side of the gun, it closes back up again. So it's nice. So though it's an AEG and doesn't have any electronic blowback functionality, we do have a bolt hold back to make adjusting your hop a bit easier. And again, that's just on the uh, standard sort of uh, charging handle that you get on an M, well, M4 or AR15 receiver. Uh, mag release is pretty standard. Um, the magazine inserts as you would expect, like so. Feels nice, there is a fair bit of jiggle. Does drop fairly nicely. Uh, trigger feels okay, pretty standard for a sort of AEG style gun. And that's pretty much it for the receiver and back end of the, uh, of the gun, it's pretty simple. Um, there aren't that many features in this, it is just a straight shooting um, long boy AEG. Uh, goes without saying, this is a CNC uh, metal receiver, which does feel very nice. So this is an all metal gun and we will get the scales out because this makes it rather heavy. So on top, we have an enormous monolithic rail that goes all the way down the gun. And it's got to be one of the longer rails I've ever seen on an AEG. And we have rails on the sides and the bottom for all of your tactical wants and needs. And then at the front of the gun, we have a lovely little sort of flash hider, um, flash hider muzzle type thing. Um, and I will actually go ahead and mention that this has a little... Uh, grub screw on the bottom and if you undo that and wind it off that will expose your 40 mil negative thread at the front so if you do wish to put a suppressor on it or anything like that you can and then we have our enormous front section and this is a very comfortable uh, large diameter handguard part of a function of the um, gun in real life I would imagine because of the amount of heat that firing one of these repeatedly would put down range seeing as it would be a fairly large caliber rifle I would have thought um, I don't know anything about real life firearms, by the way, as you may have guessed. I just like playing airsoft. Um, just to mention uh, a few other things about the internals of this. Uh, it's a standard version 2 gearbox, um, a sort of a modern style one, so you can upgrade it with pretty much any parts you want. Uh, the barrel in it is about 450mm long, I believe. And as I say, we have a rotary, sort of a standard M4 style rotary hop in there, which is probably going to be the downfall of this gun. Um, most cheap guns, and this is cheap, we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, do struggle with their standard hop-ups. Forward assist does as much as it does in the real AR-15, so it's completely scale, i.e. nothing. Um, and there we are. So that is pretty much a, a sort of overview of the externals and a few of the features of this gun. I'm going to get the uh, scales out and we're going to weigh it and see what's uh, going on inside in terms of weight. Okay, so we've got all the scales here and I was correct in this. is quite a chunky boy, over three and a half kilos, about 3.6 kilos. Um, for those of you in the States, that is eight pounds on the dot. So it's quite a heavy rifle for an AEG. However, like I say, uh, something like this has a use case. It's kind of like halfway between an AEG and a sniper rifle. So if you think that most decent sniper rifles are going to weigh four kilos plus, it is actually still relatively lightweight, with the advantage of that you don't have to uh, cycle a bolt every time you want to fire it. Um, so yeah, uh, quite looking forward to getting into shooting this. and. Uh, I think it should perform pretty well. I'm going to fling a battery in the back, just see what the response is like, and then that'll be the end of the vid. Okay, so we've got a battery in and now onto semi. It's not that bad. Uh, it's not obviously a high-end AEG. Um, what I say, we'll come to the price in a sec. However, one thing that does confuse me, obviously it does have an auto setting, and it does in fact work. So when I chrono this, I have to be a little bit careful, um, just in case it is over 350 FPS. Uh, for those of you not in the UK, we do have a bit of a limit on these fully automatic guns. Uh, so I'm hoping this is going to hit below 350. Um, in which case, to use it as a full DMR, we might require a spring swap to bring the FPS up a little bit. However, overall performance doesn't seem to be that bad in terms of cycling. So it'll be interesting to see what it does. Uh, coming on to price for this. Um, I do believe this is a really good base for a DMR uh, because it already has the front end kit fitted. Um, if you started out with like a standard M4 and want to turn it into something like this, you're probably looking at like 200 quid just for the front end kit. 
Um, so the fact that this is 165 to 170 pound in the UK makes it extremely good value for what it is. Um, feels well built, obviously it's all metal. Um, so as a basis to build something into an absolute beast if you want a, a gun in this style, this is a really good place to start. Whether it's any good out of the box or not, we'll find out in the shooting test, which will be very soon, hopefully. Um, so once again, thank you for watching. I've been Ben, it's been the Shots Fired Airsoft video. Thanks for sticking around, sorry about the pause in the videos, um, but we're back on it now. There'll be modified Mark 23s, there'll be a VMP1 soon along in a minute, there'll be the firing test of this. Plenty of content coming, and I hope to see you there. Thanks, and goodbye. Wow.